Good morning, everyone. Just want to bring you a quick video message here from the truck. Have a little truck talk here. This is this is the time of the year that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, what he did on the cross, the death, burial, and the resurrection of, of Christ, and what he did for the world, for the sins of the world. Uh, a lot of times, we this time of year, we, we celebrate this, and we also uh, take communion. And I want to tell you that if you believe the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, you are saved, sealed, and you're ready to go. You are worthy to take communion. There are there are times that you will hear from the pulpits of America saying, well, we're going to do communion, but you need to examine your heart, and you don't want to take it, communion unworthily, um, because it will bring damnation unto yourself. Uh, yes, there's some scriptures that talk about this. We're going to, I'm going to read through it in context to what, what Paul is, is talking about here, um, about what he's referring to, do not take it unworthily, okay? If you are, again, if you are saved, sealed, and seated in heavenly place, you are a child of God. If you have been saved, you are worthy to take communion, even if you committed a sin earlier on today or this weekend. Christ died and paid for all of your sins, past, present, and future. This has nothing to do with, well, I sinned today, so I guess I can't. I can't take uh, communion, and no, this has to do with, with the Lord Jesus Christ, period, and it's all what he did. We are celebrating him. So if we start, um, let's back up, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, let's just read, let's get some context going here, and let's talk about a few verses. Um, so let's start in verse... 18 of chapter 11 first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 18 says this for first of all when you come together in the church I hear that there be divisions among you and I partly believe it for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you when you come together therefore into one place this is not to eat the Lord's Supper for in eating every one taketh before other his own supper and one is hungry, and the other is drunken. So here you see believers are are basically behaving in an in a uh, in a way that they are not waiting for each other to eat. They are they are um, actually act, acting like barbarians. You know, they are they are drunken, and they and they are hungry, and they just want to jump in front of each other and, and try to get the food first. Right? They they are. Uh, acting uh, in their flesh. Verse 22 says, What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that which that shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So basically, you hear, you see here what I see. Please comment in the comment section. I see here a bunch of folks, not eating unworthily of of the of the supper, of the of the bread, and um, not having not not having a uh, sense of reflection of what Christ has done. They're just gobbling this stuff up. They're hungry. In the previous verses, they're saying, "Have he's saying." What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? You know, what's the matter with you people? You're coming here and eating like barbarians. This is the Lord's Supper. What's the matter? You're eating unworthily. This is what I see. 
today. So please comment there in the, in the comment section. Um, verse 30 says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. We come together as brothers and sisters. God. Let's wait on each other, he says. Let's let's not act like fools up here. You know, this is this is the Lord's this is this this we're we're coming together as a body and remembering the Lord what he did on that cross for us. This is what Paul this is what I see here. This is my perspective. So go to the scriptures yourself, folks, and, and read for yourself. Uh, wherefore my brethren, when you come together, eat and tarry one for another, wait on each other. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, and that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. So basically, when you come into uh, your congregation, you're not going there to eat the... the the little ritual that we do of the, the of of this of the bread of, of the bread and the cup of wine and, and be drinking this thing to get drunk and, and and eating this bread to get boy he says no you eat it you if you're hungry you eat at home <laughs> right so this is what I see so when you do communion today when you see when you do communion today or next week you are worthy you are worthy child of God all right. You are saved. You are washed. You are sanctified. You are seated in heavenly places. Take the communion. And when you take in that communion, you reflect. You reflect on what Christ has done. You reflect on the gospel. And that's good news. But anyway, this is just a quick video message about uh, communion. And I hope this blesses somebody today. If you're going to church... Or you could take communion at home. I take communion at home by myself. I'd be mowing grass, and I like, you know what? I feel like I want to go take communion. So I'd park my and you know, I said, hmm, what do we have in the refrigerator? You know, or you could take communion at lunchtime. It doesn't have to be. This is what I see. This is an opinion. This this ritualistic thing. No, I'm gonna eat my my PB and J. Oh, thank God. This is your this is your 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 body. I'm gonna break it in remembrance of you. And what you did on that cross. And I'm going to take my southern sweet tea and take a drink. And say, this is the blood. Thank you, Lord. You know, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. So, anyway, that's just some thoughts on communion. Please post on the comment section. Let's talk about this. And as I want to say, I love you. I hope everyone have a great day. And uh, just a quick update. Went into the jail this morning. It was a great time in the jail. We talked about the difference between transformation and regeneration. And we had four guys raise their hand for they, that they understood the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Um, they uh, believed on the one true gospel of grace. We talked about laying the foundation too with the, with the transformation and regeneration, with the difference thereof. But anyway, uh, thank you for all those who pray. And I appreciate you guys. And I will catch you soon. I'll talk to you later. Love you. Bye.